If mountain bike trails were food, hand-cut single track would be filet mignon. Flow trails would be lasagna. And jump lines would be pizza, craft beer, and tacos. By now you can tell that I'm hungry. But I make these analogies because today's video is about what goes on in the kitchen. What goes into making trails? Why does it matter how they're built? What tools are used? What are the chefs actually doing? Today we're at North Woods in Hot Springs, Arkansas, thanks to my invitation back to the natural state from the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism. The city is paid to have these trails built by professionals, and will be conducting ongoing maintenance to keep them running like new. It's a commitment, but there's good reason to think it'll pay off. Bentonville, which is only a few hours away from Hot Springs, has attracted thousands of visitors from adjacent states. They come to ride purpose-built gravity trails, jump lines, and stuff you would expect to see at ski resorts. While all these trails are free, the restaurants, hotels, and bike shops around them are getting a huge boost from all the traffic. Using Bentonville as a case study, Hot Springs is hoping to do the same thing. But to actually attract visitors, the trails need to be impressive. They need to drain well, hold up to repeated use, and serve a wide range of skill levels. To remove the guesswork and speed things up, Hot Springs is having these trails professionally built. Digging trails for a living sounds like a dream job. You get to be out in the woods all day, and you're required to test what you built. But it's not all roses. Just yesterday, they were clearing trail in the rain, and last month, it was 95 degrees out. But this October day is as good as it gets, and this section of flow trail has already been marked by flags tied to trees. Builders start by clearing out brush and fallen trees, using cutters, hand saws, and heavy artillery when needed. The debris is placed right in the middle of the pathway so the excavator can grab it all in one shot. Josh, the project manager, makes the initial cut. He digs down to fresh dirt, adds material where needed, and even makes the area adjacent the trail look like it was never touched. This will be a roller, and this will be a berm. We normally don't think of excavators as precision tools, but an experienced operator can roughly sculpt much of the trail using only this machine. The kind of flow and jump trails you're used to seeing at bike parks are almost always machine built, since they require so much dirt to be moved. On a trail system like this, professional builders can lay up to 250 feet of flow trail each day. But even machine built trails need to be finished by hand. You can do just about everything with the McLeod. You can cut roots with it, you can turn it into a rake, you can even shovel stuff with it if you need to, to like transfer stuff. You got your cutting tool. And then you got your ax. And this is what we would use to cut the back slope off if we were doing it by hand. And these are our, our trail builder's friend. You can cut anything from a tree limb to a hair root. And then you got your landscaping rake. It pulls more rocks than dirt. If you want to move some smooth dirt, you flip it over and you can just use it to kind of grade it out a little bit. Yeah, I use the plastic ones for leaves or like light rocks and dirt that really isn't usable. So you put a bunch of rocks in it or something and you can't really carry it yourself. You take it and you give it to somebody else and you can carry rocks. You gotta have one of those if you're gonna be doing berms and jumps. You can pack really well with it because it doesn't have, yeah, he's got one here. This is the buttless, the buttless shovel. Using mostly rakes and McLeods, builders remove rocks and plant matter from the trail surface. This shale, especially, is creating a lot of bonus work for our builders today. Once all the rocks, twigs, leaves, and logs are removed, the more desirable dirt, which will make up the tread, is left over. Now the shaping begins. This part is why build companies need to hire actual mountain bikers, who know from a rider's perspective what the trail should look like. Once the basic shape is complete, 
flat sections and rollers can be finished with a plate compactor. By running over the surface a few times, the tread becomes durable enough to hold its shape. Firms are usually compacted by hand, using a flat shovel. Since it rained the day before, this dirt is packing down quite nicely. But during a dry spell, the builders may choose to work on something different, like clearing a corridor or hand cutting a bench. Once the tread is shaped and smoothed, the builders do their final finishing touches, like using clippers to remove hair roots from the tread. Then everything is covered with a tarp to give the soil a chance to harden. Once these trails are ready to ride, the builders will test them themselves and make a list of edits to refine the trail even further. But even after all that, there's still work to be done. Trails get ridden and rained on. This perfect tread will eventually give way to loose rocks and get covered in pine needles. To keep the trails running like new, maintenance like this must be done on an ongoing basis. Rocks and debris are raked from the surface, patchwork is done to fill holes, and the process is repeated many times per year. But the section we saw today is only a fraction of what's out here. When Northwoods opens to the public later this month, you can rest assured that the builders will have tested every inch themselves. They say great riders make great builders, and that's no coincidence. If you're going to build a challenging feature, you would better be ready to test it yourself to make sure it's intuitive and safe. And more importantly, you need to make sure it's addictive and fun to ride. If you live in Dallas, Austin, Kansas City, Memphis, or anywhere within earshot of Hot Springs, Arkansas, these trails were built in the hopes that you will come here. For the residents of Hot Springs who are about to wake up to a network of gravity trails in their backyard, these trails were built for you to enjoy every day. If you want to ride the trails pictured in this video, check the description for links to everything. And if you want to know how to convince your city to build trails like this, Stay tuned for the next video, which takes place at a public gravity park in Bentonville. We're creating basically a Disney world for mountain biking. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.